era Pina Bausch, una monaca col gelato, una santa con i pattini a rotelle, un volto da regina in esilio, da fondatrice di un ordine religioso, da giudice di un tribunale metafisico che all'improvviso ti strizza l'occhio. Da lei come donna, come persona, ho ricevuto l'impressione di una grande sacerdotessa, quell'occhio tragico, quel torace eretto, rigido, quasi malato, e tutta quell'antichità che viene da lei, una dimensione antichissima, una lontananza da vestale nello sguardo, ma l'occhio come un padiglione remoto. Mi affascina la sua bellezza da Cristo e il suo corpo che è parlante in ogni parte, eppure vedo che tutta quella tragicità è capace di spaccarsi improvvisamente nell'ironia, perché improvvisamente si scopre anche qualcosa di cecchignano con quel suo faccino da un marino. E quando ci conosciamo, parliamo, lei si mostra molto divertita di me e io così curiosita da lei e la sacerdotessa si apre in sguardi che vive. Da quando, un quarto di secolo fa, assunse la guida del Tanz Theater di Wuppertal, Pina Bausch, partita dal balletto classico, già da lei stessa praticato come solista, ha letteralmente inventato un genere, una combinazione di prosa, ballo, musica, arti visive, dove partitura e improvvisazione convivono, assai vicina al sogno di un teatro totale che mette a confronto le individualità di uno straordinario ensemble con un preciso concetto di spazio e di tempo. She said she needs me and I have reason to believe her. Good reason. Like when we kiss. I was just a young dancer in the audience and full of energy and uh, actually I had so much energy that I couldn't sit the whole time during the performance because it was so long. <laughs> so I was standing up and moving around. <laughs> and uh, when I was watching this performance, I thought um, I would love to do that. But I never thought that I would have the courage to leave my country. And I never thought I'd have the courage to even introduce myself to Pina Bausch. But through accident, I got to Germany and slowly I was able to watch many performances of Pina and uh, then I did an audition and I got into the company. And uh, I think the same thing drives me now, like it did when I first saw that performance when I was 18 years old. And uh, My heart is beating like crazy. Um, because when I saw the people in, in that performance, I felt that they had so much courage. And I felt that Pina must be able to really look at those people also, like Elaine said. Her eyes go straight to their heart. Because when I was in the audience, I had the feeling I was also looking at those people and I was seeing them straight in the heart. And... Uh, i think that this is the same thing that drives me now and that uh, we always look for simplicity and honesty in our work and every time we do a new piece we come with the same enthusiasm and hope and only afterwards when you start to do the piece do you realize that maybe inside you you've grown a lot but it comes naturally it's not like you push to become a better performer or a something extraordinary, it comes all by itself and that's what's the wonderful journey I think in, in this work is that it's a journey which goes through, because 11 years is a long time for me, that it goes through many different landscapes of emotions, 
sometimes desert, sometimes oasis, all of these different landscapes. And, but you always seem to overcome and come to another, another different landscape, you know. And this is what is so wonderful, and it's a journey that doesn't seem to stop. And uh, I think what's wonderful about the company now is that we've got a, a vast a range of people, you know. So we've got people who've worked 25 years with Pina, we've got young people who come in and... exist without help. It's one thing. And it's this that interests me about Pina Bausch's work. How one thing can help us hear or see another. Martha Graham said in her autobiography, I am a dancer the beginning of her autobiography. She said, I am a dancer. We learn by practice. All theater is dance. And I share a, a common belief, I think, with Pina, and that it's all movement. Some anthropologists believe that man was moving before he was speaking. And through movement, language was formed. Sounds came and raised to higher vibrations and thought until we had words. But it began with, with movement. Martha Graham said that in stillness, there's all movement. And I remember when first seeing Pina's work, it was the stillness that impressed me. Ezra Pound said when he was in Pisa, and the fourth dimension is stillness and the power of a wild beast. What is very impressive about Pina's work is that it is complete. She is someone who's developed a theatrical language and gesture and light and stage setting and movement and poetry and music in all the arts. It's a personal vocabulary that is complete. Bertolt Brecht said that he <clears throat> wanted to have an epic theater. And what was so impressive for me, the little I know of Brecht's work, is that it's very simple. And this also impresses me with Pina's work. And it's in the simplicity that it becomes epic. 
the mystery being in the surface. I went to see a rehearsal of Martha Graham when she was 95. And there was a reporter from the New York Times who was there. And after the rehearsal, he said, tell us, Miss Graham, what is it like for you to make a ballet? And without hesitation, she said, I chart the graph of my heart. It's in this that I moved about uh, in his work. Yes. <laughs> Arthur Graham's work will be looked at a hundred years from now, or Peter Bowles, or perhaps even myself. And that's very different than what Mr. Balanchine did. With Graham's work, it will be around 100, 150 years from now. It will have a place in history or was a product of our time. And I think, Pina, it happens once. Once. Wäre ich ein konsequenter Mann und oder eine Frau, würde ich jetzt Ungarisch sprechen, das niemand versteht. Es ist nämlich egal, was ich über Pinau Bausch sage oder schreibe, ob das ein Essay ist oder ein Bericht oder ein Laudatio, egal, die sind immer Liebeserklärungen. Und, und die Wörter bei einer Liebeserklärung, Sie können sich erinnern, die stören nur. Auch ich sage jetzt Wörter statt Wörter. Die Schritte, sagte Pina, kamen nie aus meinen Beinen. Vielleicht aber die Wörter, meine Wörter, kamen jetzt aus, aus den Beinen. Schließlich war ich, und wo sie ich damit prahlen, wenn nicht in Italien, über Pina Bau sprechen. Und damals habe ich vorgestellt, es war eine sehr schöne poetische Gedanke, wie sei das Leben eines Pinobausch-Laudators. Wie schön das sein könnte, wie man sich vorbereitet, blättert in Kataloge, Alben, Wuppertal von hinten, Wuppertal von vorne, mit Schwebebahn, ohne Schwebebahn. Wir blättern und blättern, die Tage vergehen, wir tun nichts, machen wir uns einige Notizen, absolut überflüssige, wir vernachlässigen unsere Arbeit, rasieren uns nicht, waschen uns kaum noch, wir bauschen. Und damals wollte ich etwas Absurdes oder Unvorstellbares sagen und sagte, was für ein schönes Leben das wäre, das wunderschöne Leben des Bauschlaudators, man wird nur mit unserer eingeladen, in einem Bauchstimposion zu einem anderen Bauchstimposion. Und jetzt bin ich hier. Also meine immerhin nicht allzu große Fantasie hat mich eingeholt. Ich stehe im Schatten des Ätna, als wäre das das selbstverständlichste Sache der Welt. Ich stehe da und kann nicht anders, sozusagen. Ich, ich bin nicht der Mann der gesprochenen, sondern der geschriebenen Worte, aber ich könnte stundenlang über sie sprechen, über, über ihre große, alte Kunst, über die Wichtigkeit dieser Kunst, dass Seit Bausch bedeutet das Wort Tanzen etwas anderes. Und eigentlich, das war meine Idee damals, müsste das im Duden nachgewiesen werden. 
F bar, N bar. Four bars, Nacht bar. <lacht> da Sie den Tanz, der besonders das klassische Ballett unter der Oberhochheit der Eitelkeit steht, Sie hat ihn von dort herausgeholt und ihn unter die Oberhochheit der Schönheit gestellt. There was a big master in India and uh, he was asked to come and speak to few villagers who were waiting for him for many, many years. Finally, his way brought him to this village and all the village assembled under a banyan tree, waiting, sitting respectfully. And the master came, greeted the public, sat down and asked, I suppose you know what I'm going to talk to you about today. And everybody said, yes. He got up, he greeted the public and he went away. <laughs> <laughs> Then he said, if you already know what I'm going to talk about, you don't have to talk. So the village people felt very stupid and they entreated him so much to come again. After a few months, his way brought him again. He came to speak. He came under the same dining tree. He sat down. Now he has the same.